It's a Denver 7 weather action day as we join you now on Local 3. The snow that's been falling throughout the morning has made a mess on the roads. From the metro into the mountains, parts of I-70 have been closed for several hours because of safety concerns. You can see this picture from our crew on the scene uh, near Evergreen, and you're, and you're seeing just so much snow on the roads right now. We Part have our... Oh yeah, our team spread out across the front range to show you what to expect before we head out. So let's start here in the studio with Colette Bordelon with that big closure on the interstate. Oh, there are backups yeah. all over 70. I want to get you to that map right now. You can see those red dots there on 70. That's where those closures are. Take a look though really quickly right now at one of our CDOT cameras. That is showing the backup there near Floyd Hill. Oh, I would not want to be stuck in that at this very moment. But there are two other closures that I want to tell you about a little bit closer to Genesee. So if you take another look back at our map, you can see where those two are right now. If you take a look closer to here, this one, 70 westbound between C470 and US 40 closed because of safety concerns with that winter weather. We have another view from one of our CDOT cameras. They're showing that back up there near Genesee. Oh, this is actually near Floyd Hill still, but once again, 70, just an absolute mess this morning. If you can avoid it, I definitely would. Yeah, and you're going to find on most of our cameras, Colette, up and down the front range, it's going to look like this. Here's the view from Lyman right now where we're seeing obviously some snow covered conditions there. A slushy, icy snowpack, depending on where you're at. Take a look at some of the snowfall that's still coming down. It's going to continue for the next few hours. Most of our alerts set to expire at noon at midday today, but until then we're going to pick up even more snow up and through the foothills, likely another three to potentially five inches up and through the northern front range mountains. It's a bit more of a mix down near Pueblo, stretching east toward La Hunter, where we've got a little rain mixing in with it. But here in town, here's a look at some additional snowfall, anywhere from one to about two inches here from Denver north up to Fort Collins, a little bit heavier for the Palmer Divide and up and through the, the foothills and mountains too. Temperature wise, it's pretty chilly. We're in the low 30s right now. We're only going to see mid to upper 30s here by this afternoon, so it will be a cold one. Stacy Donaldson now live outside where the snow has been on and off a little bit heavier at times. The wind's also picking up, so I know it's making it feel quite a bit colder out there for you. Well, wow, Lisa, when the wind kicks in, it's teeth chattering. It feels like it's in the teens right now. We've seen the snow coming down pretty steadily and then in big waves at times. So we're starting to see it solidify a little bit more on the roadways. We're seeing the tread in the slush on the roads here in downtown Denver. So still pretty chilly this morning, but this has been a very temperature dependent storm as we fluctuated just a little bit above and below the freezing mark. So still a lot of much needed moisture here for the front range, but at times just slushy on the roads. Looks like everything's moving along smoothly, at least here in downtown Denver. A little worse, of course, as we've been talking about off to the west. As we get through the rest of the day, though, that winter storm warning still in effect until noon this afternoon. So we'll keep an eye out for more snow, a couple more inches here for our area and uh, watch these roadways for worsening conditions, guys. Stacy, the snow stopped falling on you, but uh, Denver 7's Veronica Costa has been uh, following conditions in the South Metro and Highlands Ranch still snowing and very slushy out there, Veronica. Very slushy. The roads are slushy. The actual, you know, sidewalks are slushy. A lot of it here in Highlands Ranch. You can see just coming down to my feet here. This really tells the story of what this storm has been like. A lot of slush not only on the shoulders of the road, but also on the main road as well. Take a look there. You can see some of these cars and what that splashback is like. That's going to be the main thing you're going to be seeing on your morning commutes. You can see the kickback there from those front tires as well as those back tires. Those windshield wipers, they have been going all morning long for us. It is starting to stick just a little bit more on the actual roadways. It was a lot warmer this morning, or at least it felt like it. So that's probably going to impact your morning commute. And of course, you see folks out shoveling some of that snow on some of those sidewalks as it starts getting lighter outside. So just keep in mind, windshield wipers, they will be going all morning long. Guys, back to you. And you can follow along with the forecast anytime using our free Denver 7 Plus app. We have a 24-7 weather stream on there. You can download that on your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Android.
Well, the United Nations is holding a meeting today to discuss the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. The UN says there are now more than 3 million refugees who escaped the country since the war started. The meeting was requested by the U.S., the U.K., France, Ireland, Norway and Albania. A Ukrainian official says Russian airstrikes destroyed a theater in Mariupol where civilians were taking shelter. Look at the satellite image here. The writing on both sides said that children were inside and that it was targeted anyway. The former head of the region shared in a short statement on Facebook that people were coming out alive. It's unclear right now how many people survived. President Biden is sending $800 million in military aid to Ukraine. One of the weapons going overseas are switchblade drones. Unlike larger Predator drones that fire missiles at targets, the switchblade drones fit into a bag and are not meant to return from their mission. These drones are designed to crash directly into a target, which detonates its small warhead. The administration's support package also includes Stinger missiles, rifles, and thousands of anti-armor weapons. The man accused of killing 10 people in a Boulder King Supers last year remains incompetent to proceed with the trial for now. A judge ordered Amad Alyssa to a mental health stay at a state hospital. Doctors believe he will likely soon be restored to competency with the use of medication. There is another review hearing set for April 15th. A woman accused in a suspected road rage shooting is now in custody. Commer City Police say Destiny Edwards was arrested Wednesday. Investigators say Edwards shot another woman after their vehicles crashed last Thursday morning. She's facing a charge of attempted murder. We asked Commer City Police for an update on that victim's condition, and so far we haven't heard back. Well, breaking overnight, Michaela Schifrin is taking skiing's overall World Cup title for the fourth time. It's a much needed win for the Colorado native after failing to medal at the Winter Olympics in Beijing last month. Congrats to her. Mm -hmm. Well, excitement has swept over Broncos country as we are officially in our Russell Wilson yeah. era. The Broncos introduced Wilson as the new quarterback Wednesday. And uh, you might remember he actually played for the Rockies back in the day. He spoke about his special connection to Denver. Uh, Denver is a place that uh, has meant a, long, a lot to me over the years. But to know that this is a winning football team, you know, if I was going to wave my no trade closet, you know, it had to be to a winning football team. And these guys are winners back here. And so I'm excited about it. It's a winning locker room. So it's about the players. You know, it's about the players. It's about obviously a great coaching staff and the organization. But uh, the players, we help get it done. And uh, that's what I was excited about. Broncos country, let's ride. Wilson said his goal is to play 10 to 12 more years and win three to four more Super Bowls. The Broncos tweeted this picture showing Russell and his wife Sierra holding up a Wilson jersey. They titled the picture King and Queen of Broncos Country. And if you want to get your hands on a jersey, you can order one right now through the Broncos Fan Shop on the NFL's website. Six of the top 10 best selling jerseys right now are Wilson. You can also find them at the team shop on the south side of Empower Field. Well, former Broncos star Von Miller will not be returning to Denver. He has signed a six year $120 million deal with the Buffalo Bills. Well, from the football field to the basketball court, the CSU's men's team is getting ready for its first round in the NCAA tournament. Six seed CSU is taking on 11 seed Michigan. Tip off is at 10 15 a.m. in Indianapolis. The Rockies kick off their spring training games today. The team is playing 21 games in 20 days. The Rockies and the Arizona Diamondbacks share a spring training facility in Tucson. Salt River Fields at Talking Stick. It's the most panoramic spring training park in all of baseball, in my opinion. We have uh, mountain views, 360 degrees around the ballpark. It's stunningly beautiful. The architecture, uh, the land that it's on, um, it's the only... Uh, Major League Sports facility built on Native American land. Tickets start at $15 for the lawn area. The Rockies are welcoming a new player, Chris Bryant, signing a seven-year, $182 million deal to come to Colorado. Bryant was an all-star last season for the Cubs before being traded to the Giants. He was the National League MVP in 2016, too. The Rockies' season opener is against the Dodgers Friday, April 8th at Coors Field. 
We are right now looking at more snow falling here in town and totals are going to add up to well over a foot up and through the foothills. We'll get some new numbers here pretty soon. Uh, right now expecting another one to three inches in and around Denver. It's going to be heavier south and west of town. Uh, view from Lyman right now. A uh, mix of conditions on the roadways from slushy to wet. Some heavy wet snow out there, but it's also good precipitation. We'll take a look at how much more we're expecting in the timing of the storm collect coming up. Oh, and it's making for a real predicament there on 70 in both directions in different areas. This one right here near Floyd Hill on those eastbound lanes. Stop and go traffic. Some at a standstill there. Closed because of safety conditions and some semis stalled in the road. Then take a look. This one closer near Genesee. You can see these backups this time in the westbound lanes of 70. Closed for safety concerns. Take a look here at our map. I'm going to run you through our drive times on the metro and some crashes that you need to be aware of this morning. Another rideshare company is supporting their drivers as they try to manage rising gas prices. How much more your next lift could cost you? And helping people practice their faith. How one Colorado woman is supporting others in a unique way.